All my life, I've wanted to have my own swoosh, and now that I have my own channel, I have my own damn swoosh. I don't know what happened. I, I'm seeking counseling. Anyway, I'm Black Dragon. Welcome to Black Dragon Biker TV. And as always, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is that you happen to be. We have a wonderful morning. The sun is out. It's bright and shining in Atlanta, Georgia, and things are great. And they're even better on the West Coast with my co-host, Mike Ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Black Dragon and Mike Ball. Monday through Fridays. Monday and today's Friday. Monday through Fridays. Black Dragon and Mike Ball. Doing our thing, man, out here in the number one biker news channel in all the world. Yeah. So like, share, and subscribe. Share, like, and subscribe. And check us out Monday through Friday as we talk about things from the biker angle. Mike mm -hmm. Ball says it's not about chivalry. It's about dope lyrics and delivery. And that's what we have Monday through Friday for you. Man, look at that. Oh. that Freaking Ooh. epic. Man. Oh, shit. Oh, Good morning. Shit. Man, top of the morning to you, Mike Ball. Top of the morning. You are a little down. You are a yeah. little down behind the I scenes, was, you know? And so what, and what you, happened? We started having me. fun. We started yeah, having fun. You rapped for me, and, and that changed it all. I got a rap from Mike Ball this morning, guys, and it was... A, a personal one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> What's good, y'all? What's good, Steve? What's good, brother? No, I see you guys. Yeah, absolutely. You need a doctor, all right, Black Dragon, a witch doctor. Damn. Stop wow. the cat. Stop the cat. Exactly. Hey, man. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, over here, a man sentenced after a planned robbery ends in the shooting death of a biker gang members in Lamarck. Oh, I shit. guess that's Lamarck. Yep, that's what I think. This is a, this is a crazy story, Mike Ball. Mm. You, 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 what I don't understand about the dope gang, and maybe that's because I'm not in it. Maybe. Um, it's hard to understand things you're not in, but it, it would seem simple to me. A guy has some dope. Sure. A, product. a guy needs some dope, a product. A customer. A customer. You, 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 you go to the guy's house that has the dope. You give him the agreed upon price. You check out the package to make sure you got what you, you asked for. Sure. So far, so good. Uh, so far, so good. And right. uh, you take a little test and uh, run it across your teeth, like or whatever they do in the movies. Right. <laughs> you know, that I don't even know if that's how they really do it. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they're, you're tasting, I think, for what you're doing regarding cocaine, yeah. is I think they're t trying to taste like baby laxative or if they're trying to taste like if it's been cut terribly. You know what I mean? Okay, so, so you 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 put that's it what I'm guessing, screen. but I've never I've never even used, so I don't know. Whatever you do, you right. get what you you get your meth, whatever you 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 stick it in your whatever you do to test it. It's okay. I sure. like it. You're like then this you, is a good product now. I'll take it. You get your package and you go on on. Right, you right. go on on until such time as it's time for some more. Sure, but it doesn't it doesn't seem to go that way. It's no. all some BS. Like, oh, the dope is good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that about? I upheld my end of the bargain. What the hell's yep. going on here? What's the, what is this? I don't understand. I don't understand. You got oh, no protection. Just, the only protection you got is yourself, you know. So. so we just got demonetized. Probably so, right? But I'm thinking that's 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 all there is to it. But mm -hmm. the dope gang seems to be so screwed up because that's never all there is to it, it seems. So in this case, a man obviously planned a robbery. It ended in the shooting death of some biker gang members, and now he's going to get sued. When all he had to do, Mike, was just go get his stuff and go on on. Mm -hmm. You got to learn the words, go on on. 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 Like, go on continue on. on on. Go on on. Don't just continue on. Continue on on. on. In, in in the hood, we say go on on, go on on, man, go on on with that mess. Mm -hmm. 
Anyway, Galveston County, Texas. A man reached a plea agreement for his role in a deadly shooting involving members of the outlaw biker gang, the Banditos. Nearly two years later, on Monday, Anthony Terrell Miles was sentenced to 50 years in prison after being indicted for the capital murder and pleading guilty to murder. Investigators said... Oh, he said, pled guilty. Yeah, he pled guilty. He was indicted for capital murder and pled guilty to murder. What, what date was this? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was updated yesterday. Yesterday, right. Two days ago, March 20th is when it was okay. updated. Uh, investigators said the series of events happened. Well, here's the date right here. May 15, 2022. Okay, that's the event. Yeah, that's the event. When Miles and a co-conspirator, uh, Marv, Marquis Crawford, plotted to rob Audrey Eugene Wayne Fuller III and Jared Lee Clark, Miles, and Crawford lured Fuller, an apparent member of the Banditos Motorcycle Club. I don't know why he was an apparent member, but that's what they say. And Clark, an apparent Banditos prospect, by pretending to buy drugs for them at a home in Lamarck. Apparent? To, what does that even mean? What? Apparent. I, I don't know. Apparently they were. I yeah, don't know. apparently they had. they were in a club. I, I don't know what the appearance was of the yeah. apparently. Yeah. But it was apparent. To it the, was apparent. To the most casual observer. And it is apparent. It is. <laughs> apparently. In any event, <laughs> according to, I'm just saying. Not the cap. I'm just saying. Uh, so investigators said this, it happened on uh, May 15, 2022, uh, where the apparent uh, Banditos member and apparent prospect were, uh, they, Jared Clark and my, uh, Miles and Crawford decided that they would lure Fuller, an apparent member, okay, over there to pretend to buy drugs from them at a home in Lamarck. According to the Galveston District Attorney's Office, Crawford then drew a weapon, prompting Fuller and Clark to do the same. Crawford, Fuller, and Miles were all struck by bullets during the shootout, according to officials. So let's, 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 let's think about this. Uh, so the co-conspirators were Miles and Crawford and they were going after Fuller and Clark okay and so they say Crawford drew his weapon first because he was going to rob them so Fuller and Clark both drew their weapons and Crawford Fuller and Miles who didn't draw a weapon at all we're all struck by bullets during the shootout. So they were all shooting each other. So Crawford, the first guy who pulled his gun, got shot. Fuller and Miles uh, got shot. Miles was one of the co-conspirators. Mm. And uh, Fuller was uh, the Bandito uh, club member. So the Bandito club member, Fuller, was shot. Uh, and Miles and Crawford were shot. So the two co-conspirators were shot. So they went over there to start a, to, to, to rob, and they wound up getting shot. Uh, so three of the guys were shot. Investigators said Crawford, one of the co-conspirators, died while running through the backyard. Holy he, shit. He ran through the backyard and just fell over the hell dead, I guess. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit. Yeah, starting some shit and effed around and found out. Found out the hard way. Yeah. It sounds like a good old fashioned Texas circle jerk, says Northern Cody. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, investigators said uh, Crawford dialed, died while running through the backyard, and Clark dragged Fuller out of the house and drove him to the hospital where he died. Um, okay, so Clark was one of the. Okay, so Clark was the. Um, yeah, the guy who who I guess didn't get shot. Clark, apparent bandit's prospect. So the prospect dragged the the uh, member. He did what he was supposed to do. He dragged the member out of the house and drove him to the hospital where he died. So you know you could have been like, oh my god, we were in a drug deal. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take care of my brother. He's just gonna have to die here. No, he took his club brother to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that was that's what you're supposed to do. That is the right move. Yeah. At a plea at the plea hearing Monday, 
Crawford and Fuller's mothers and grandmothers told the court how the loss of their sons has affected the family and the community. After the hearing, Lamarck, police detective Matthew Stipert said he was glad to bring to justice all involved parties. What does that mean? Does that mean they all got some time? Uh, We could not have solved the puzzle without all officers, investigators, forensic scientists, and experts involved. Clark still faces charges of narcotic trafficking and tampering with evidence. The Lamarck Police Department, DPS Crime Labs, Harris County High Tech Crimes Unit, Galveston County Sheriff's Office, and the Galveston County Medical Examiner were all involved in the investigation. ADA Kate Willis noted that firearms analysis by LMPD Detective Gene Crow, DPS Forensic Scientist John William Knight, and the DPS Laredo Firearms Division were instrumental in solving the case. But what did you need to solve this case? It all happened right there at the house. But anyway, right. uh, here's some, uh, oh, so no, no pictures for this. So, wow. No. Uh, so a guy, so There a guy is that video, though. Lost his life, huh? I think there is that video. No, that's not a video of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is one of those ones where they. Yeah. Is, yeah. So, Mike. Damn. So, uh. It looks like the only ones left alive were the prospect right. and um, and Crawford, right? Yeah, as um, Joseph says, so. prospect definitely gets ain't no punk award. Yeah, the prospect would get an ain't no punk award on this one. Yeah, yeah so uh, life has no value anymore, Chucky. That's the one thing that is hard for me personally to you know witness is there's so many people that don't even care for human life anymore like disregard it and uh it's too bad because life can be beautiful and you know i I live my you know the life to the fullest i can you know i i've died four times so i know what it's like to kind of you know go through something tragic and come out on the other side and win well i and i personally suffered something like Something akin to this. I mean, I was shot four times, and uh, I, I, I know how that feels. It's horrible, and it's scary. It's, it's just, it's horrible. And people just end your life, man. They'll just end your life. You know that to me, that happened December eighteenth, nineteen eighty seven. Nineteen eighty seven was almost like forty years ago or something, right? How long yeah. ago was nineteen eighty seven? Yeah, almost forty years. I there are so many things I wouldn't, I wouldn't have met you, Mike Ball. Right. Wise. None of you. I mean, think about it. I'm only 28. Yeah. Yeah. I was about 28 when that happened. Okay. Let's move on to another story. Obviously, well, we, you know, we, we lost a, a a brother in a biker club and um, a a needless tragedy. Man, you got to be careful when you're in in that business. Uh, It looks, sounds like they were ready. Mm -hmm. They were ready as you could be. And anyway. Uh, video captures a thrilling encounter between a biker and an Asiatic lion in the forest during midnight. Where, where the hell are you that you run into a lion in the middle of the forest? Uh, Got to be like in the safari, right? No. I guess the safari doesn't have them. Do they? Uh, I don't uh, even know. Uh, this might be South Africa. I don't know. Hey, Chucky, is this South Africa? In a mesmerizing encounter captured on camera and shared by an official from Uterakan. Uterakan. I don't know yeah. where that is. Uterakan. That's, that's got to be in Africa somewhere. A biker found himself face-to-face with an Asiatic lion. Well, why would there be an Asiatic lion in Africa? I don't know. But anyway, an Asiatic lion in the depths of a forest at night. The footage depicts depicts the biker navigating through the darkness with only the beam of his headlights illuminating the path ahead. Suddenly, the majestic presence of an Asiatic lion emerges from the shadows gracefully approaching the motorcyclist. Remarkably, the biker remains composed, unlike the black dragon, who would have lost his SHIT on the spot. (laughs) Yeah, you would have. What would Mike Ball the, the what would Mike Ball the wise have done? I don't know. Until you're put in those situations, you don't really know how you're going to react. You'd have lost your you'd have lost your marbles like me. The you biker don't, you remains, don't know how it is until it is. Okay, all right, Mike Ball. The biker remains composed. Well, the that biker remained composed. 
probably saved his life, displaying a calm demeanor as the lion draws near. Well, I would at least have my sidearm out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lion can take a few of those. <laughs> oh, yeah. They can take a yeah. couple to the face. You know yeah. what I mean? They're and crazy. Eat you before they die. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, shared by Dr. P.M. Descartes. Hold on. Hold on, BD. You're, you're lagging right now. Hold on. While you lag and you just coming back, welcome back. Willard says, um, Wild, sorry, Willard. Wild says, four, time, uh, four times damn, did something happen in that moment? People say that they see things after passing. Um, yes, I died four times, internal bleeding, external bleeding. And uh, I died luckily in the hospital, so they were able to bring me back all four times. And um, yeah, you know, I had over 25 emergency blood transfusions no, as well. That's what he's asking you. He's asking you, did you see Hold on. And, the and, white light? And I'm saying that after all of that, I did not see anything. It was all black. I didn't, didn't see or remember anything like that. Nope. You didn't see the white light. Nope. Nope. Then there you was didn't none die, of that. bro. You didn't die. Well, my medical records show that I died four times. I don't no, know you just you just passed out deep. <laughs> right, right. I just really passed out. Just like I was really, really tired. Passed out. Right. All well, right. I'm, glad, I'm glad you made it back, Michael. Anyway, this di this biker almost died one time. Remarkably, the biker remains composed, displaying a calm demeanor as the lion draws near. Further details showed, uh, shared by Dr. P.M. De Descartes sh underscore the theme of coexistence. There's a theme of coexistence between mankind and animal, highlighting the serene passing of the lion and a reminder that harmony between humans and wildlife is attainable. Only so long as the wildlife wants to be nice. Here, we got a video of it right here. This is freaking crazy, man. This is on X. Here we go. Look at that. Do you see that? This wow. lion is walking down a dirt road. Holy shit. Hell no. Hell no. You're getting too close right now. <sighs> oh, that's insane. That's insane. Yeah, get out of there, dude. <laughs> that guy that guy was calm as hell. Look how big it is. I died one time. It's called marriage never again. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. More, more. That's crazy. More power. more power to that biker, man. More power to him. Until you're in those moments, you don't know how you're going to react. Uh, you know I know I mean? how I would react. Man. That, you, would, I, you would flip I, shit. I, man, come on. I'd be trying to get a U-turn something. You try hey, to do anything to not reason get... that black people do not die in horror movies. Okay, mm -hmm. we're, we're not trying to see the majestic interaction between man and animal. Not, none of that. There's right. A, I'd have been out of there. You when guys, I, I know you guys don't play with animals. White people, we we tend to no. definitely like you know no. animals, or we have animal like a, a exotic animals and stuff like that where we just don't care. I know. Yeah, that's y'all. Yeah, y'all be wrestling alligators and stuff. There's so much of y'all on TikTok. I know. The, just the never guy, the, and it kills me. The guy, the white guy who's never seen an alligator decides he's gonna wrestle it. Hey, yeah. I've heard Wanda that all I gotta do is jump on its back. <laughs> <laughs> it's some balls, dude. You gotta give him credit. No, I that that's not balls. That's that's a thanatos. Do you know what a thanatos <laughs> is? No. A thanatos is a death wish. Yeah, that's what that is. Not to pull you off to the side too much, but look at this awesome message. I'm glad I heard of you. Been ordering and reading your books in a in a social club. I don't think they care for me much anymore since I gained so much knowledge from your books. Charvette Harrington, have you Charvette, first of all, thank you. But Charvette, I've done something that's gonna blow you away even more. You probably don't know about this yet, but uh I wrote a book called Social Club's Bible. Yep. And if you get Social Club's Bible, it's only been out two months. If you get Social Club's Bible, they're really going to hate you. Because I wrote that book for you, Social Club ladies, so that uh, you could have power uh, of knowledge when these MCs be trying to start uh, that BS. Hardwire said, uh, <laughs> Mike Tyson has a big old tigger. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think Mike okay. Tyson has tigers anymore. I think he 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 passed that phase of his of blowing money like that in his life. Uh, there's a gal who traveled the world on on a motorcycle and has met, had many adventures, and she is on YouTube. Itchy Boots is her name. Okay, uh, we will check her. Out. Yeah, uh, that's a fact, Steve. You know she that. Charvette said, uh, said, never heard of it, but I'm ordering today. Go to blackdragonsgear.com. Throw that up for her, Mike. Yeah, I got Go it. to blackdragonsgear.com and uh, mm-hmm. order an autographed copy for me so I can order uh, or, uh, get it for you. And then let everybody you know know about this book. This book, Charvette, was written for you and women in social clubs to empower you. You will know everything about social clubs and the biker set and motorcycle clubs and motorcycle club history. Uh, should you get this book, Social Clubs Bible? There you go. There it is for you. Thank you so much. That's dope. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. Thanks, Mike, for bringing that up. Hey, next story. Um, you do know I'm worldwide known now, Mike. That's a fact. Uh, that's it is of, world. No, 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 no. no both take of the us. credit. Take the credit. Take the credit. No, no, no. Don't do that. Yep. Don't take do the that. credit. You, this it's my, all I, you, homie. I've got no, control no, no. too. No, no, I'm gonna lock you out. Don't make me control. lock you out. No, I've got control too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do. Uh, hit and run, hunt for a hit and run biker after a girl is struck near a pedestrian crossing. Speaking about women, uh, Lancashire police, this has got to be over in the UK, said a young white male, there you got, there you guys go again, Mike. Yeah, we're going crazy. We're going crazy in the streets out here. A young white male, <laughs> right? And, and it's a young one like you. That's what mm-hmm. you can. He got, he got upset. He got upset. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Some road rage incident. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm mad. I'm going to hit this woman. Anyway, straight up. Uh, like I sharp police said, a young white male riding an off road motorbike when it struck the teenager on uh, Briarcliff Road uh, says he, here's the guy here. Uh, on the motorcycle. Uh, you can't particularly tell what color he is right there, but uh, he's real close to this car. Jeez. Damn, like his left leg must be pinched. Like- it, it looked like he hurt himself more than anything, but police are hunting for the hit-and-run biker who struck a girl near a pedestrian crossing. Uh, Lancash- uh, Lancashire Constabulary's Special Ops Unit said the incident happened on uh, Briarcliff Road. Look how they spell Briarcliff. That's so weird. Uh, Briarcliff Road in Brumley yesterday, March 21st, shortly before 3.30 p.m. Officers said a young white male, they just keep throwing that young white male out there. Yep. Uh, they, was, they love doing that right now. I, I don't know what, what's going on against the white people, but man, no, no, they're, just they're, the they're, they're white, 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 white. You know? Just the young white males. He didn't white, say white, 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 white. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Was riding a red-orange off-road motorbike when he struck the teenager close to the pedestrian crossing at the former Duke of York pub. The motorist then failed to stop at the scene. The, the force is investigating and has released a CCTV image of the biker as they appeal for witness information. You know, the British are so nice. They appeal. We're appealing to you for witness for me. I, I guess I shouldn't pick on them for how they spell. It is their language, however. So, it is. Uh, anyway. we, we stole yeah. from them and then yeah. we started like changing the way that they spell things, and now we so do everything it was, different. It was actually done by Webster, and he did it on purpose. Really? Yeah, to, yeah, to poke an eye in the, uh, to poke a finger in the eye of the British. No shit. Yeah. No he, way. He, he purposely spelled words like color. Yeah. He spelled without the U. And, and then... Oh man, here goes BD mm-hmm. lagging again, man. Man. Oh man. Welcome back. You're, look, trash and rubbish. Yep, fact. Welcome back, BD. Welcome Thank back. You. Yeah, so he um he did that on purpose. I read that somewhere. Anyway, mm-hmm. they're looking for a guy who ran over somebody in, in uh, hit and run, hit and run, hit a, a, a teenager in a pedestrian walk. That, so that was, that was sad. But didn't say the kid got killed or anything. Uh... When BD starts making sense, he lags. <laughs> <laughs> Not the cap. Uh, yeah. We got uh, some interesting stories going on. Yeah, here's another one from The Guardian. 
Yeah, this a is, dangerous this is drunk crazy. driver ran away after knocking a woman off a bike, but I'm not sure if that's a motorcycle story. Well, either uh, way, e either way, Sean Price matter. was slammed by a judge who said he did not give a hoot that day. Hoot? And was very fortunate not to. He said hoot, and very fortunate not to have killed her. The 35 year old father was told his disgraceful actions constituted one of the worst examples of dangerous driving the court has ever seen for some time. But despite inflicting a brush with death on the biker and causing her excruciating injuries, he was spared being sent to prison. So they said biker. She might be a motorcycle biker. Price appeared before Liverpool Crown Court. Oh, that's over in the UK again. More of these guys over there. To be sentenced after pleading guilty to charges of dangerous driving, drunk driving, and failing to stop after an accident. The oh, court shit. heard from prosecutor Christopher Hopkins how the incident occurred on Holland's Lane in Winwick in the direction of uh, Br Burtonwood on June 24th of last year, around 7.49 p.m. or so. The victim, who had five years of experience and considered herself competent, was riding her motorbike. Oh, this was a biker story. I was. Riding her motorbike uh, on a route well known to her. So she was, they're trying to say she was completely in the right here. While she would normally wear full protective gear due to it being a hot day, she was only wearing a vest, shorts, a uh, helmet, and gloves. So, Mike, she didn't have everything on she was supposed to have. Right. She was being very careful on approaching the junction with Watery Lane, reducing her speed and checking her mirrors and blind spot as the junction has a reputation for being dangerous. You know, all of those uh, circle things, what do they call them things? Those roundabouts. Roundabouts, yeah. They call them junctions over there. Traffic circles. Yeah, they're junctions. She, so she knew the junction was dangerous. Hey, if you've ever been in, in driving in one of them damn things over there, you man, can get caught. Those things are dangerous, especially the big ones. So she was being very careful because she knew she didn't have the right clothes on. She knew she was was dressed uh, inappropriately. So she, and and then she knew the junction has a reputation for being dangerous. So she she was careful. The victim indicated to turn left, but heard an engine noise behind her. Before a vehicle, a black Land Rover Discovery driven by the defendant came out of nowhere, moving fast with the engine sounding stressed. <laughs> Miss Hopkins said, Mr. Hopkins said the biker was catapulted up into the air before becoming aware of an intense pressure in her lower back and burning sensation after being thrown onto the bonnet and being knocked unconscious. Uh, I believe the bonnet is... It's the side road, I think. Mm, okay. If I remember correctly. Pitbull, let, let us know. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. in England over there. Yeah, let us know what a bonnet is. I think that's like... He, he not... said it. He actually said it in the chat right here. Look, see? So he's he oh, knows the hood. what a bonnet... The hood. Okay. She was thrown onto the bonnet. The hood. Interesting. Oh. Oh, man. It shows that I don't know everything. I'm so embarrassed. But between, right between us, we and, know everything. Yeah, yeah. That's when they knew. Yeah. So she felt a burning sensation after being thrown into the bonnet and being knocked unconscious. The Land Rover continued down the road with the motorbike underneath it, damn, for 200 meters before coming to a stop. As shown by dash cam footage, played in court. The victim managed to crawl to safety by the side of the road after being thrown into the path of an oncoming car as witnesses came to her aid, unlike Price, who ran away into a field. This dude, she was in intense pain and felt like she could not breathe, and she was taken to the hospital to receive treatment for her wounds. A layer of skin was removed through contact with the road surface. Ouch! Mm. We Damn. call that road burn over here. Oh, yeah. I, I got road rash myself. Road rash. Yeah. yeah. I had my entire back. My entire back was road rash. That was uh, extremely painful. She lost one of her se seven layers of skin Ugh. through contact with the road surface, which was unpleasant and painful. I bet you. And the complainant suffered mobility and sleep trouble for weeks afterwards. Yeah, you can't sleep after those. As well as financial no. loss from being signed off work and attending medical appointments. Witness reported seeing the Land Rover approaching the collision very fast, weaving and on the wrong side of the road with Price not appearing to brake before the crash because he was drunk. 
Oh, here's the crash. This is the junction. This is not a rotary. No, this is that's not. This actually a left right hand turn. This is one of those real intersect. We call these an intersection. Yeah, that's just a normal intersection. Intersection. They call them junctions. I got it. Which is that's fine. All right. The the junction. One witness said the defendant was slurring his words and mumbling incoherently after leaving his vehicle with the smell of alcohol overpowering. Police were called and and attended the scene with an officer giving chase across a field before detaining Price. They ran after him, who had a car key on him on whom the officer could still smell intoxicant. Price mm -hmm. was said to be slurring his words with a glazed expression and unsteady on his feet with body cam footage played in court showing him swearing out, out of breath uh, at the officers and giving a false name, this guy. Damn. A search of the Land Rover, which also smelt of alcohol, found an unopened bottle of beer and a pint glass that a suspected defendant was drinking from while driving. Damn. Price refused to do a roadside breath test. Of course he did. But he did so at Runcorn Custody Suite. Oh, they have custody suites over there. They sound so nice. Right. Uh, which produced a lower reading of 86 micrograms of alcohol per 100 millimeters of his breath, putting him at more than double the legal drunk drink drive limit. He told officers a cock and bull story. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that he had been to a pub in St. Helens and got into a car with someone else who was driving, but that after the crash, he jumped into the driver's seat, grabbed the keys and ran away. That's a nice cock and bull story. It didn't work. The victim what? was present in court and read out her impact statement in person, detailing how she now feels like she has the body of an old woman due to her soft tissue damage. Well, you should have been wearing the right clothes, my dear. Her mental health also suffered a deep decline with anxiety, causing her hair to fall out, and she felt like she was dying from her injuries. You, you can shit. feel that way, Mike. You can. You can feel that way. Well, um, I mean, it's a, men it's a mental state. That's yeah. really what it, you're either disintegrating yourself or you're going to like hey, go, hey, I'm going to conquer this and be strong minded, you know, but she said I used to be outgoing and bold, but I'm now shy, timid, reserved and a shadow of my former self. She said, I am angry at the driver and he has taken a large portion of my year from me and I'm worried he will hit someone else. He did not care about if I lived or died. He was more concerned about not being in at the area when the police arrived. If he hit me an inch differently, I could have died. My brush with death has changed my life forever, she said. Recorder William Waldron described the victim's statement as moving, articulate, and brave. Mm. Mm -hmm. St stating that her experience must have been excruciating. Yeah, it sounds like it. Mr. Hopkins informed the court that Price has four previous convictions for six offenses, including two separate incidents of drinking and driving. Damn. This guy here. He's got a problem. They call it drink driving. Drink uh, driving. Rep representing Price, Trevor Perry Jones highlighted how there are two sides to his client when drunk and when he is hardworking. And in, uh, the other side is a hardworking individual providing for his family who are appalled at what he did. Oh, my God. All that complaining was really about a lawsuit to make to make bank. Well, uh, it sounds like it works. The court heard he turned to drink after experiencing a tremendous debt, but makes no excuses for his behavior, is remorseful and extremely, extremely upset and pleaded guilty to all offenses. Before sentencing, recorder Waldron said a car driven badly and in the wrong hands is a dangerous weapon, creates a potential lethality to other innocent road users. Uh, yeah, because it was one of those drunk guys that killed my brothers, club brothers and sisters a year and a half ago. Uh, even if impaired by drink, that decision to drive while drunk is a direct and deliberate choice with utterly no regard for the impact of others. So uh, anyway, let's see. How long did he get? Did it say? He must also be on alcohol. Uh, so, okay, he got 16 months in prison, suspended wow. for two years. That's all? That's literally it? 16 months no way. for two years. He also must abide by an alcohol abstinence monitoring requirement for 120 days, four months, and undertake 24 rehabilitation activity requirement days and complete 200 hours of unpaid work. Community service, we call must it. Must have had a really good fucking lawyer. Man, after all that, that's all you, he got? You got to have a fucking good lawyer at that point. 
Wow. Yeah. Even over there in Great Britain, they have good lawyers, I guess. Man. Yeah. That, That's uh, wild. That sucks. Hey, listen, I got this video from uh, the guest that we had on the show the other day when we were talking about um, the border. And yeah. I've been saying, oh, there's no border crisis. This is all BS. There is no invasion. Well, they continually update me with pictures. Here's one here. Mike, this one is crazy. Look at all these damn people. Oh, Look at wow. that. Woo! Whoa. That, that is no joke. Is crazy. Wow. Is, do you see that? Wow. Uh, if you ain't down there, you wouldn't know. No, you wouldn't. That that that's crazy. That's so you still think you still think we we don't have a border crisis? Well, do you take the st the same stance originally that you had? Well, I'm being educated. Oh, of course yeah. you'd go lagging as soon as I ask you that question. Driving isn't a right; it's a privilege. Yeah, it's true, Joseph. Fact. Laws are a little different over there. Facts. Welcome back, BD. Okay, and that's my that's my feeling about that. I didn't hear. Ah, uh, well, it's over now. I've I've already said what I had to say. Uh huh. Uh huh. You you didn't uh, hear? I, I don't know. Sure. What to say. I'm you're gonna use that. You're gonna thinking. use that for your advantage. Okay. Stop the cat. <laughs> Stop the cat. Uh, I'm being educated. I'd say I'm. Hmm. Uh, I'm learning. Um, I'm being educated. You know, I, I don't know if it's an invasion, but it's absolutely a crisis. Um, he's controlling his lag. <laughs> I got the lag switch. Oh, and he's running his own lag. <laughs> so he can get out of questions. Absolutely. Here's one. Here's a crazy one I got on Instagram. Um, this guy gets hit by a coconut. This lady gets hit by a coconut while she's riding her motorcycle out here. In That's a right. Hardwire. Have you seen this one? Uh, no. Did you see that? What the heck was that? Just a, a coconut falls. Oh, a coconut fell. That's what happened. I mean, what kind of luck do you have that you're riding down the street Damn. and a coconut falls on your head? They're not even wearing helmets right there. From Notice the guy right there? Too. Yeah, a helmet would... <laughs> He's not even wearing a helmet. Oh. Something like that could kill you. Dude, not only could it kill you, but it could put you into a coma. It could totally do a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. Wow. That, that, that's, uh, I don't have anything yet, Mike. Okay. That, that's, uh, <laughs> that's crazy. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that, man. That, yeah, they're that not was... wearing helmets over there, dude. <laughs> Here's a, another interesting story about a biker. Pull this one up. This biker on drugs, <laughs> this biker on drugs, ran a red light to avoid police and then crashed. A biker on drugs who ignored police request to stop, drove through a red light and later crashed, has been banned from driving. This has to be in the UK. <laughs> I don't know if they ban you for driving here. Sean David Strange, age 18, pleaded guilty at Weymouth Master, Ma Whew, Weymouth Master <laughs> Court. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Weymouth, oh, shit, oh, shit. Weymouth Magistrates Court yesterday to driving over the limit of M M MDMA ecstasy, THC cannabis, failing to stop for police, and driving a vehicle otherwise in accordance with a license. The charges relate to an incident on September 9, 2023, on Radipole Lane in Weymouth. Robert Salami. Uh, prosecuting said Strange had been riding his Honda motorbike on King Street in Weymouth with a woman passenger as a uh, as pillion. You know what a pillion is, don't you, Mike? No. That's the little back seat on the back of a motorcycle. Oh. Like that little pad. That's the proper the proper yeah. term over there. Pillion. It's a proper term here too. I didn't know that. Yeah, that she's not riding B I T C H, but rather riding pillion. Yeah. I'm used to that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Most people say, oh, you're riding the B word. Right. But no, it's riding pillion for educated bikers. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say any of that. But yeah. Would you like me to get on the pillion, please? 
What? <laughs> that sounded what? dirty. That sounded no, dirty. dirty. One thing though, no dudes on the pillion, no matter yeah, what. Come on, dude. No nut to butt action. <laughs> no. Stop the cat. I feel good the cap. overseas all the time. Like, uh, I know, yeah. I know. My, my neighbor's from Venezuela. He asked me if I would give him a ride on my motorcycle. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, down not. in Brazil, when I went down there, there's there's dudes on you know the front and back. You know what I mean? They're riding they the bitch too. Brotherly, and, brotherly love than we do. Listen, I'm I'm sitting there going, that'll I'll never do that. If uh-uh. you turn around backwards, I might let you ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> no, when That's I was in great. the navy, uh, when I was in the navy, they did too much of that. They yeah. have especially the first night we ever pulled into boot camp that first night they're yelling and screaming get in line get in line get in line right now get in line you dirt bitch get in line get in line right now not the butt not the butt march not the butt if you if you're from Oklahoma you're like what the hell are these navy dudes talking about not the butt this doesn't even sound right <laughs> oh, anyway yeah, another English story. They said, they said Robert, uh, Robbie. <laughs> another English story. Yeah, they, we're we're on the English stories today. Anyway, they're uh, they're they're definitely uh, heavy in the news today. Over there in England, they're not do, doing the right things. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Robert Salami. Do we have a Robert Salami? Yeah. Right. Anyway, Robert Salami prosecuting said straight. <laughs> that is a funny name, Robert Rob, Salami. Robbie Salami. Uh said strange had been riding his honda motorbike on king and he had a a a, a pullion despite not having a license that would allow a passenger do, do you see that he had a woman on his pillion but i guess over there you have to have a license that allows a passenger you can't just be right they, they you listen can't just do it? the laws in england for driving are way harder than they are over here especially for part. motorcycles that part in Germany, like that yeah. stuff over there, you got to really know yeah. how to drive over there. Yeah, they they don't have that. They take it serious. Yeah, they it's do. Very serious. Police tried to stop Strange by flashing their lights. Strange drove through a red light, and the officers opted not to pursue so he wouldn't kill his dumbass. Later, police came across the same bike on Radipole Lane after it had crashed, even though they decided not to chase it. The passenger had suffered a fractured toe in the collision. Ouch. Damn. Strange was breathalyzed at the scene. The officer became suspicious after Strange asked if anything other than alcohol would show up. Why would you ask that? For real. Would you like to take this breathalyzer? Uh, Sure. Now, does it show everything? (laughs) Or does it only show alcohol? Right. (laughs) Officer's like, why would he ask that question? That's so stupid. Uh... He was then arrested, and a blood test confirmed he was over the limit for the two different drugs, MDMA, 45 micrograms for 100 milliliters of blood. The limit is 10. He was at 45. And cannabis, 4.4 micrograms per 100 milliliters of blood for a Delta 9 tetra tetrahydrocannabinol. Wow. Which is THC. That's the name for THC, I guess. Tetrahydrocannabinol. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. I, but I never heard you. It's kind of funny, but. Well, what, is, what do you call it? Tetrahydrocannabinol. I, 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 I forget how to say it correctly, but. You're trying to say that my pronunciation of tetrahydrocannabinol is wrong? Well, you did better there. You're, you're, you're starting to get better. <laughs> anyway, the limit is two. He was at 4.4. So if he hadn't said anything, Damn. he would have. He would have passed the breathalyzer when he opened up his mouth. Strange representing himself. <laughs> oh, and then he's oh, also going to... Dude, what is going on? What is going on? Has, has nobody told this dude? Has nobody clued this guy in? Like, hey, don't do this. This guy you know is representing mean? himself on top of it all. <laughs> Strange, <God. laughs> oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> Strange representing himself said in mitigation... I was in a different mindset, and I was not doing well. I I have paid for this by harming someone who is very dear to me. Oh, the the girl that broke her her toe. It is hard for me. The fact that I harmed her, seeing her suffer, made me realize what a mistake I made. 
The court heard that Strange, who has no previous convictions and indicated uh, his guilt in a police interview shortly after the incident, has now changed his behavior as a result of the incident. The prohibition, the probation officer said that Strange has demonstrated remorse and had a difficult childhood. At the age of eight, he was placed into the care of his grandparents. He started in 2014 to fend with fears and to deal with what had happened in his childhood, Mike. Wait, hold on, hold on. You're lagging. There you go. He he started taking at the age of eight, he was he was placed in the in the care of his. No, wait a minute. He at the age of eight, he was placed in the care of his grandparents, and he started taking drugs at fourteen to fit in yep. with his peers and to deal with what had happened in his childhood. Michael, you don't understand. He's 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 the victim here. I want you to okay have love for him. I don't see love for him. Stop in the cap. Home. No, don't press that button, Mike. Stop the cap. Mike Balderwise. <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Mike Ball, I, I need some wisdom from you right now. You're not feeling my, this. My, my, my wisdom is me about to walk out the door right now. <laughs> because I really do actually have to get going. That was my alarm that you heard. Uh, your gra- Okay, let me finish the story real quick. Yep. Which the, chair of, uh, the chair of the magistrates, Graham Westbrook, said, we've heard a lot about you, young man. You pleaded guilty at the earliest opportunity. You have demonstrated remorse and have started to take control of your life. Your grandparents sitting in the back in the public viewing gallery are visibly mortified, but they are here for you. Strange of Lyle Road in Yeovil was ordered to complete a 12-month community order and 200 hours of community service and he's been disqualified for driving for three years. And we'll pay the court a surcharge of 114 pounds, the victim a surcharge of 85 pounds in court costs. So Damn. he got off. Definitely he got, got off. off. Yeah, he got off. It's crazy, dude. I I feel for him. I have <sighs> I he he's he's beautiful. He's got a beautiful soul. And Mike Balderwise, you are callous. Yeah. You are a callous, hateful individual, and I don't understand why. That's right. You, you, he's, you, he's you, a victim. He's, he's a victim. Not the, not the lady that he hit and ran away from. Right. No, he's the victim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rough. And he won't do it again, Mike Ball. No. Nope. <laughs> kid. Hey, the one and only mob chaser one percenter says, Mike, are you going live on TikTok today? Chase, shout out to Chase, man. Yes, Monko. sir. We're we're gonna go live. Yes, we're gonna go live. Ah, anyway, uh right I after I drop that, off my daughter from at school, we're gonna go live. Yeah, I guess that's our stories for right now. I have one a very particularly heartfelt story. That I want to do, but we run out of time. Well, so can, maybe you can do it if you want. No, I want you here for it. Oh, too. okay. We can yeah. do it tomorrow then. Yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. Uh, it's a sad ass story. Maybe we'll do it this afternoon. Anyway, um, Mike, you got to get out of here. We've been on for an hour, right? Yep. Yeah, we've been on for just about an hour. We got on on time this morning. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, we do appreciate you all for watching. We got on on time this morning. We will be going live on TikTok and doing other things that we do. That's right. Yes, sir. I can't wait to see all of you guys over there on the TikTok channel. Make sure you follow uh, Black Dragon Biker TV on there. Uh, and then also me, Ball Valve TV. And that's it. You know, we're going to we're gonna go live here and probably, Chase, you say, what time? We're probably going to be live in about an hour. If I had to guess, about an hour, hour and a half. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for for being here, and thank you for tuning in and chilling with our us and uh, the number one biker news channel in the world, man. Appreciate you guys. I'm gonna see you guys on the flip side. Hey, man, and I Black Dragon, man. We appreciate every day you guys tuning in with us, hanging out with us. Um, and uh, we we got on on time this morning, so we're so happy to be trying to get in on time, man. Hey, um, like, share, and subscribe for us, please. And check us out. We'll be on TikTok. Mike Ball says in about an hour and a half, uh, between an hour to an hour and a half. So we'll, we'll see you guys then. 
I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. Love to hear your two cents in the comment section below. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook, get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from BlackDragonsGear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. Get Black Dragon's first book, The Prospects Bible, to learn how to join a motorcycle club. It has been an Amazon number one bestseller for the past seven years and is required reading for over 3,000 motorcycle clubs worldwide. This book is a must-have for new people venturing onto the motorcycle club set. It will teach you how to prepare yourself for service to the motorcycle club nation and show you how to qualify a motorcycle club to be worthy of your service. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and for order at your local bookstore. Get your autograph copy at blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club prospect you can be. Get the book.